1847, Captain Corf sheltered from the storm. He realized what the Gambangia people had known all along. He called his bay Corf's Harbor, but in 1861, a government clerk spelled it wrong and Corf's Harbor was born. The gold rushed through the miners up into the hills. If they were alive today, they'd be looking still. There wasn't much to find, but they stayed anyway. Farming the fertile land their families farm today. Coffs Harbour, it's your birthday, 150 years. A melting pot of cultures, we've all made our home here. One thing we have in common, of that you can rest assured, is we all love our little corner of the world. Ever since the beginning of Coffs Harbour's history, it was developed by hard-working pioneers. Firstly, they came to cut cedar and work in mines. The mines lost their roofs and the cedar was getting harder to find. But these men and their families stayed in the district and turned to farming and cut hardwood. With all the produce being sent away by sea, the harbour had to be made safe. Sea walls were built. The walls took many years to build. The north wall began in 1915 and finished in 1935. That took 20 years. The eastern wall began in 1917 and had lots of problems with the big seas washing it away. In 1970, concrete blocks were still being used to build that wall. 2,247 40-tonne concrete blocks were used on the eastern wall. More families started arriving. This is the first home of the Grant family in Coffs Harbour. In 1953, it was a big year for celebrating. The town had suffered two world wars and the crowning of a young princess, everyone believed that this was the beginning of a new era for Australia. The streets were crowded with people who came from miles around, adults, children and anyone who wanted to be a clown was there. The reason for all the celebrations was the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Bells rang, bands played as this young woman was crowned Sovereign of Great Britain and the Commonwealth. The Queen's light, clear voice was heard around the world through the BBC. Although Australians could not see the coronation, many heard her voice. The film came out within a month titled A Queen is Crowned. Coffs Harbour people joined together to make this day a real memory. There were floats, which mainly had the coronation theme. The day's celebration was held at Brelsford Park. Brelsford Park was Coffs Harbour's first golf course with six holes. In 1942 it was levelled for school use. In 1944 it became a boundary fence and a cricket pitch, but there were still no buildings then. This big day was celebrated by the young. Many of them had decorated their bush bikes. Everyone enjoyed the first big celebration. At the end of World War I and World War II, there were street celebrations, but this was the biggest yet. People just joined in. Those that watched loved it. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, plus all the helpers, were well represented. Coffs Harbour had never had a celebration like this before.
The work and imagination that was put into the floats was amazing. It was a day that kids and adults talked about for years after. I was even there. Fished the pristine seas From India and Italy They planted banana trees They searched for gold in the hills Had a go with sugar cane Sweating in the summer sun And cursing the bloody rain The break walls we take for granted They took a lot to build Manpower and muscles On steam powered wheels Every rock and concrete block Was dropped in one by one to Muttenberg and the Eastern Wall until the job was done. Coffs Harbour, it's your birthday, 150 years. A melting pot of cultures, we've all made our home here. One thing we have in common, of that you can rest assured, is we all love our little corner of the world. The men who were working on the railway line were going to strike when the contractors bought in steam-powered machinery. You see, they thought that the equipment would leave them without a job. The rally to Coffs Harbour segment was finished in August 1915. The Arunga Bar was getting harder to get across. The North Coast Railway Line was built in segments and at different times. It was mainly built by manual labour. Let's have a look at a couple of shops in the 60s. Coffs was growing in the 60s. Here's a young couple working in their shop. This looks like young Billy Palmer and his good wife Ruth. Remember Sue Martins? and Schaefer's. Ah, uh, another parade. This time it's for a carnival at the harbour. Everyone is there again for all the excitement. Water skiing was big in those days. There were some good boats and skiers about then. Jetty diving was also popular then.
With the crowd, it's a wonder more people didn't end up in the water. Water skiing was in in a big way then. Here's a couple at Urunga. One of them looks like Bill Milston. Let's have a look and see how the town's growing in the early 70s. You'll recognise many of these places. They have mostly been pulled down and rebuilt. The Ex-Services Club, which was opened in 1959, Where the great dividing range runs down to the sea, banana covered hillsides, a quilt of jungle green, the solitary island light guides the ships around the reef, and the jetty reminds us how Cox Harbour came to be. The harbour was a lifeline, the only way in or out, until they built the railway line down to city town. We've seen some grand vessels, but no grander sight it seemed. When the royal yacht Britannia dropped anchor with the Queen. Now Coffs Harbour, it's your birthday, 150 years. A melting pot of cultures, we've all made our home here. One thing we have in common, of that you can rest assured, is we all love our little corner of the world. This was the centre of town. There was a lot of vacant land around the town centre at the beginning of the 1970s. The suburb of Tormina was built in the early 70s. Paddy Hargroves had a lot to do with getting this subdivision going and later on the Link Road. Arara High School was to be Coffs Harbour's second high school. The Arara High School was built at the end of Joy Street. Joy Street was just a little used dirt road. They said it was too far out of town. We got our first traffic lights in 1971. They even put signs up to tell us how to use them. It's a pity they didn't leave them there so everyone would know what to do nowadays. Notice how there is more people in the streets. This is the early 1970s. Coffs Cup, what a day. In 1909, the Shire Council proclaimed a public holiday for a race day. Horse racing has been a popular sport over the years in Coffs Harbour. The Coffs Racing Club was really flying with big successful race meetings. It had a long history of starts and stops, dating back to when it was first opened in May the 13th, 1885. Remember our old hospital? How could you forget? 
Sunnyside closed in 1963 and it was in 1967 when the government said Coffs would get a new hospital. The residents of Coffs had been trying to get one for 30 years. Let's have another look around town in the 1970s. More shots around town. Our post office. The telephone exchange. The Church of England. Coffs Harbour Motors and E.W. Smith Engineering. Looking down Park Avenue, past Norm Jordan's auction room. Walton's second big store in Coffs. Norm Jordan had been chairman of the show society and chairman of the hospital board for many, many years. He organised and built the caravan park at the showground and a, a pavilion is named after Norm Jordan. Fitzroy Hotel, Pat Brooks, the National Bank and Brannock Chambers. Dark's Corner, Caber's Shop and Chas Horville's Camp Gear Shop. There's a roundabout there now. Don McGuinness started an engineering shop here. Then Dick Willis had the Datsun dealership. Fitzroy Motors was owned by Vic Redcliffe, then Dick Burns, and then bought by Surrey Partridge in 1963. You know, there was 16 petrol stations within 200 yards of the post office in the late 60s and early 70s. Here are some of the other well-known landmarks. The Windmill Plaza, that was built on Hacking's garage site. Geoffrey Motors, the Holden dealership. The Tasma Picture Theatre. In May 1977, local fisherman Vol Nelson, with a lot of help, dragged in the biggest catch of mullet ever recorded in Coffs Harbour. The 70s and 80s was also a period of rebuilding. The butter factory was demolished. The Coffs Harbour Show has always been a real family day out. Over the years there's been some very big agricultural shows in Coffs Harbour. The Civic Centre was the heart of the city. Any important function was always held at the Civic Centre. Coffs residents still talk about the Civic Centre and the good times they had there. The School of Arts was the first town hall, but it was bought by Woolworths and the Civic Centre was built in 1963. The Civic Centre was where all important functions were held. There were baby shows. Lots of dancing and social nights. There were balls, nearly every Friday night during the winter months. This was when everyone danced together. It was more orderly and nicer, don't you think? Conferences and meetings and concerts were all held in the Civic Centre. 
This is a crowd at a meeting in the Civic Centre in the 60s. It was opened in 1964 and was demolished in 1996. The Tasma was pulled down in 1968. Another place that was much used and loved by the uh, people in Coffs Harbour was the famous Star Motel. This was the social centre of Coffs Harbour. The Toreador restaurant was where people met for dinner. The motel was owned by Jeff and Cynthia Nolan and opened in 1954. It had 40 units. The motel had guests such as the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh for breakfast, Sir Roden Cutler, John Singleton, Sir Frank Packer. The big night was Friday night in the Toreador room. Each Friday night, Robbie McDonald was the chef. Molly Goodenough was in charge of the dinner night and worked there for over 20 years. Ruth Connolly was at the reception. In April 1970, there was a lot of excitement in the town. Queen Elizabeth II, the Duke of Edinburgh and Princess Anne were visiting Coffs. The Royal Yacht was going to come into the harbour. The whole town was decorated and many dressed up for the exciting event. People arriving here at the jetty. The naval boat stayed outside the harbour. Finally, the Queen and Duke arrived at the jetty. They then rode to the waiting cars. There was a march in old uniforms. The Italian community first began to arrive in Coffs Harbour in the early 1930s. They paid their own passage here and worked their way into banana plantations. Names such as Spagnola, Del Pozzo's, Zaganati, Franco's, Canali were all very popular and fitted into the Coffs Harbour lifestyle. Here they are enjoying a picnic day. Today, there is well over 100 original Italian families living in Coffs. The Abel Tasman was one of the many ships that loaded timber from the jetty. In 1906, 400 ships a year were loaded from the Coffs Harbour jetty and in 1960, only 25 ships visited. June 1973, the Able Tasman left the harbour for the last time. In 1979, the last commercial ship left the harbour. In 1984, cranes and railway lines are removed from the jetty. An exciting event 
that was first staged in 1964 was the Coffs Harbour Sea Fari. It was such a success, it was again held in 1968. The competitors navigated over a 120 kilometres course at sea. Each boat was given directions and navigational bearings and were sent off three minutes apart. There was well over 50 competitors and these boats were the latest, 45 years ago. Bradford won both events, with Lee Wake, the first events navigator, and Charlie Smith was his navigator in the second event. Racing at sea, how game were they? has had many fishing classics. The first was held in 1964. The boats and crew left from the beach in those days. A couple of years later, the club took over the old public works office. The deep sea fishing club has been there ever since. Ships sailed in from all around the globe Filled them up with timber that struggled with the load Didn't need to run the sailors across the railway line they walk If only the walls of the pier hotel could talk Long before TV you made your own fun The town would come together when the work was done A fishing comp, a sports day, the old three-legged race and you never really needed an excuse for a parade. Coffs Harbour, it's your birthday, 150 years, a melting pot of cultures, we've all made our home here. One thing we have in common, of that you can rest assured, is we all love our little corner of the world. Coffs Harbour has always loved parades. One of the biggest was the 100 year celebration. That one's coming up.
This was the parade that was held for the Coffs Harbour 100 year celebration. Let's have another look. Baby shows and concerts, dancers and balls. Partners love gliding across the civic centre floor. The small the sport of the star motels, the best on the coast. The highlight of the year was the Coffs Harbour Show. Now the tourists come in aeroplanes or drive up Highway 1 to see the big banana and soak up the sun. There are bread and butter now, the timber trade is done. The jetty's just for jumping on, now it's just for fun. Now Coffs Harbour, it's your birthday, 150 years. A melting pot of cultures, we've all made how I'm here. One thing we have in common, of that you can rest assured, is we all love our little corner of the world. Now Coffs Harbour, it's your birthday, 150 years. A melting pot of cultures, we've all made our home here. One thing we have in common, of that you can rest assured, is we all love our little corner of the world. Yes, we all love our little corner of the world. Yes, we all love our little corner of the world. Happy birthday, Coxaba!